Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it doesn't get much bigger than this. Joining me today, I've got a soccer a Melbourne victory legend, a Guinness World Record holder, the greatest ever A-League player, the king of Melbourne, Archie Thompson. Welcome to 1-0. Uh, thanks for having me, brother. No worries, and you're laughing at the, that intro, but Archie, you're, you're a goat. You know, you, you know the impact you've had at victory. But to have you on here, you know, those watching know that obviously a big Victory fan and go to the games and do all that sort of stuff. And it was looking a, bit, a little bit grim last year. And sometimes we just wish we could sub on a cheeky little Archie Thompson late into the game. The charismatic enigma, that's what we like to call you. So. <laughs> Wait, mate, to be honest, I don't think I could have even helped them last year. Because <laughs> no, nothing was going their, uh, their way. But um, thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, it's always humbling when I hear those sort of um, praises. So it's hard to, you know, it's hard to hear sometimes when people, you know, obviously say things really nice to you, but I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Well, first of all, how's it going? How are you? You've trans transitioned sort of from football and then gone into the media. What's the media sort of thing been like for you? Well, to be honest, man, I, I really love it. I, I think when I first went into the um, industry, I was a little bit naive thinking that I could just go in there, um, let my character kind of um, really just um, take care of the work, but it's not like that at all. You have to, um, You have to put just as much work on as I did when I was training which led into the pitch. I I I, it, I would realize very quickly that I needed to do that in this um, this world. And uh, you know, you, you'll get your critics. You'll get people that don't, maybe don't like the way that you, you you analyze things or the way that you talk or whatever. But um, I, I I I love it. I feel like I get the same sort of buzz when that light turns red for live on the camera, and all of a sudden I'm like this this new person. Like it just I feel alive. I think that's the excitement I get when I um I step in front of the camera. What I what I almost got uh, was well, similar to when I stepped down on the pitch. Um, very much the same. Definitely. So, I and mean, you're someone obviously that, and like we see your your persona come through so much in the media now, and when when you're commentating the games or when you're analysing the games, you're someone that obviously had that bit of flair, and, and like we mentioned before, that sort of charismatic enigma that you look like every player sort of wanted you on their team. Is that something you feel like? is slowly getting taken away a little bit from current day footballers where with social media and, you know, Harry Maguire, for example, he has one bad game and he's just torn to shreds. Do you think people are a little bit worried to sort of, you know, fully express themselves maybe as much as you did? And did that ever advantage you or disadvantage you at all throughout your playing career? Well, I will say Harry Maguire's had a lot more <laughs> uh, worse games than just yeah. one. <laughs> I will say that. I'm a United um, fan, so I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> But, but I will say, does he deserve the abuse and um, negative um, feedback? No. Like, I mean, because um, you, you only go out there to do the best that you can. Um, you don't go out there to, to um, in anything, you don't go out to do, to be a failure. You want to do the best that you can and, and make people proud and happy. And sometimes you're not going to be able to do that in any walk of life. And I certainly felt that when I went out on the pitch. I mean, as much as I... Um, really enjoyed being out there there was always fear because I didn't want to let people down didn't want to let my teammates down didn't want to let myself down didn't want to deflate my own ego because I had such a big ego back then um but it's 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 just the way that the world I, I guess turns at the moment is that um we're so quick to judge and make judgments I try to um not be like that but it, it filters in um because it's almost like some people want to hear that negativity because then it's like, oh, yeah, he's saying it real because, um, you know, maybe someone missed something or didn't. But I don't like to try to do that because I know um, being in those positions, you've only got split seconds to make decisions like uh, that can change games and change outcomes. Um, and let's be honest, if um, if everyone can do it, that would be professional athletes. But there's 1% of the 1% that 1% can do it. So uh, I think we've got to pay respect for everyone that goes out to try to do the best that they can on any walk of life. Um, I, I do pass judgment on things, but I, I try not to. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I just froze a little bit there, that's all. Um, definitely, for sure. So obviously we mentioned your time of victory. I just want to give you one because obviously we'll, we won't keep it for too long. Give us maybe, I know it might be hard because you've had a lot of good memories. Just maybe your, your favourite memory. One that sticks out for me is obviously that famous goal, wearing that yellow strip against Melbourne Heart. 
where you obviously took the shirt off. The guy, the guy in the crowd let you know his feelings. An, an iconic moment, a little chip. I was at that game as well. Just unbelievable. What's one that maybe stands out the most for you? Oh, man, look, I'll have to say um, definitely the grand final wins, both of them. Oh, no, all three of them, actually. They were great. Um, Just drop that in, all three. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I did. I see the ego still doesn't go away, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, I think I, 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 I think that game for me was the one that you mentioned was pretty special because it was a derby. It was just before Christmas. It was a last minute winner. Um, the way that Adama nicked that ball at the back um, that could have easily easily have got in behind him, and it could have been a different um, scoreline at the end. Um, but you know that that was really special. You saw what it meant to the fans. That was Hump and Stadium, Amy Park. Um, and like I've said in many interviews and, and after that and even talking about that game, I was the black Santa for most of those uh, victory fans <laughs> that year. So it was, uh, it was beautiful. It was a really nice memory. Definitely. So obviously the season's kicking off for the men's next weekend. What, do you have sort of any early predictions or especially for victory, how they're going to go? Um, all signs are that... Um, no, everyone was kind of waiting for a big signing, uh, but I feel like there's um, all reports are that they're, they're doing well and they'll be solid all over the park. Um, it's a, it's a hard one because you never really know um, until maybe a few rounds in to see which teams are the ones that are going to have a real impact. Um, it's probably one of the most even seasons I, I think I, I, I've seen and you can't go off um, you know you could easily say that a, maybe Sydney FC because they won the Australia Cup but but like I said um, no one really knows until a few rounds in who's going to be there come the pointy end of the season uh, but look I, I think um, victory are a good solid chance hopefully because like uh, like we always talk about for this league to have um, any kind of success or impact or maybe um, from a viewer that hasn't seen a game, if Victory are doing well, stadiums are full, it's jumping in there, um, it's it's fantastic. So, look, I hope they do really well. Um, it'd be a shame if they don't again. Definitely, definitely. No, um, of course, I think, I think, like you said, not that the A-League needs anyone, but you do feel like the A-League needs a Victory to do well. Sydney FC as well, Adelaide just, you know, yeah. like you said, the crowd comes in, the, yeah. everyone wants to go more, it looks as better spectacle and... Obviously, it makes the A-League more money, so they're not going to say anything. Yeah. But, but you played, obviously, with someone like Kevin. Yeah, and the football's good. Like, the football's good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, we've got to touch on the Socceroos quickly in a little bit, but you played with someone like Kevin Musket. Obviously, he was your captain at the time as well. We're speaking about him as a manager. Was it always sort of a given, and was that something that you expected, just playing with him, that it was going to go on to become a manager and, and similar taking a similar sort of route to an Ange Postacoglu? Yeah, um, 100%. Like, um, I just think that he was sort of destined for that role um, because of his leadership, his knowledge of the game, his understanding of the game. Um, and working under Ange, I think that helped him so much. And it's really funny because Ange has kind of um, set the blueprint for Musket to come in and have success at Victory. He's gone to Mar um, the is it Marinos, yeah, yeah. Um, the Japanese thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, and Ange has already kind of set the template again, and he's come in and he's worked his magic, and again, um, he's had success. So, um, you know, it seems to be that where Muskets followed Ange, he's had success. Yeah. Uh, but like, but he, he's he's a super manager. He, he, look, you always see. I even said a few years ago that. Um, I, 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 it wouldn't surprise me if I don't see Kevin coaching the Australian team one time, like um, down the down the tracks, down the future sometime, because um, he, he's he's got that uh, drive and a, an ability. I feel like he's learned his his sort of trade at victory in the in terms of how can I get the best out of players yeah. um, in the right way, and um, and he seems to be doing that, and, and it's and it's great. It's great to see. You always want to see people that you've. Um, maybe no have success or anyone have success and he is definitely so I mean, you obviously played with some great players both at victory and and during your time with the Socceroos was there someone there or is there anything that you have about some of the players like your Harry Kuehl or your Tim Cahill that that really stood out for you the most and like with obviously those likes we're talking about sort of the most professional of the professional as an outsider is what it seems 
was there something that, especially those copper players, that stood out really for you? And what was it like for you yourself as a player, just playing with them? Oh well, look, in, uh, I think um, ability has a, a massive part in the. Uh... I guess taking taking you to the highest level, the elite level, but you've got to have something that's a bit different in terms of like that, that competitiveness, that one win mentality um, in anything. Like it's not just in football; it's like in absolutely anything. Um, and I feel like that the 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 guys that are in that top bracket of um, of the elite have that mindset and. Uh, Harry had it. Timmy has it. Like all those guys, just um, just need want just want to win. It doesn't matter at what. And uh, and when you've got that sort of drive and the ability, and you combine those together, you you just um, it it takes you to another level. Added that professionalism in it too. Like I think uh, with Harry, he, he had brought his own masseuse along, his own physio. Um, those are the sort of um, I, I think. When you, if you can afford it too, which is fantastic, um, it helps you get to another level because it's all about the, that professional recovery, um, how you look after yourself, what you do off off the pitch. And I was never great at that because, uh, you know, I, I like to sort of float in and out of that professionalism of it. But I yeah. guess that's what makes everyone unique. They, they, they find their own path. Definitely, definitely for sure. So, I mean, Archie, I won't keep it for too much longer. I just want sort of one... For- one one final thing, I guess, more focusing yeah. on yourself. You can look back maybe at the time while you're playing. It's a little bit sort of difficult maybe to sort of really realise maybe how your career is going or the impact, like we said, you've had at a club like Victory and especially on fans. What's a, as, have you sort of taken the moment to reflect now that you've sort of hung up the boots and really go, okay, I'm proud of my career or there's something that I could do different and... And do do you ever sit back and reflect? And do professional footballers ever really do that and just go, okay, you know, I'm I'm proud of my career and I'm proud of what I've achieved? Yeah, I, look, I, I think um, there's always uh, moments in your life that you think, oh, maybe I could have done that better, or maybe I could have done this, or maybe I could have done that. But I feel like if we live in that, we're not going to be um, present to what's the opportunities we have now. I um I have I'm so grateful and blessed that my football career has given me the opportunity to um work in, in the media uh, and to have all these amazing experiences, not just with football, like, you know, MasterChef, um, yeah. doing the Formula One, going and doing Spring Carnival, um, having opportunities to, to do reality TV, but, um, you know, timing hasn't worked out that uh, that has happened, but it will. And, I, I, like, I, I, I'm pretty blessed in that, that that's happening for me because um, – there's a lot of people that have had fantastic careers, but unfortunately, maybe they haven't gone on to do things that they, you know, maybe would, would have liked to have done in terms of being more involved in the game still. But um, I, I no, I love every moment that I had and the impact of, I guess I have is that when I still have people, um, you can see their excitement when they meet me or they they meet me for the first time or they watch my career or watch games. And I mean, I was just at an event yesterday at the airport and, um, and the amount of uh, people that were like, Oh, Archie, Archie, it's, it's amazing to see you. And um, can I have a photo? It's so great. I mean, like there's some people that will go, Archie Thomas, it's so good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> but it's, it's just beautiful that we, um, that I, I, I still have that, um, effect on people even so long after the game. I guess it's um, after me playing. It's just, I guess that's beautiful because I, I feel like people are related to me um, because, uh, you know, I always kind of said that I, I there was ego that kind of maybe um, came in or crept in, but I, I will say that I, I, I didn't think that I, when I was playing football, that I was saving lives. So there's a lot of more people out there that are doing amazing things. So that's what was a, the humbling part for me that was easy to be humble with. Um, but just incredible. I, I I still love it when I go to victory games and they you know they see me and they sing their uh, they sing the the chants. It might be getting a little bit um, less because of the younger crowd coming in. They don't maybe don't know just the the like you know oh, what what kind of impact I had. But I I still love it. Awesome. Well, 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 like I said, it's credit, credit to you. And you mentioned when, when people see, obviously, when I mentioned my mention work, work at Ultra Pool, so every time you walk in, it's, that <laughs> word gets spread super, super quick. Yeah, I love that. Archie's at the front. Archie's at the front. So, 
So it's, it's definitely, definitely pretty tuned. It's great to still see, I guess, on our screens as well. Sometimes, you know, these legends that play, they just fade away and get away from football, which I don't blame them, but it's always great to see you still on TV. So, Archie, thank you for jumping on. Uh, hopefully one day you get to, get to meet in person and we'll speak for a longer time as well. And it's literally it's yeah. a bucket list moment to, to get you on this. So thank you once again for that. Um, oh, oh, thank you, bro. And yeah, yeah all, all the best with your future stuff. Oh, I mean, you'll follow Archie Thompson anyway, but just in case you don't, we'll leave everything there. We'll share it on Instagram, all that stuff. But Archie, thanks for that. Hopefully, you get to see us on Victory Games. Hopefully, we lift up the trophy at the end of the year as well. So, have a good one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.